So mm. I saw my barber. My barber did the transformation. Right. And I was like, I know this guy. It's my barber. He did the transformation. I said, hey, babe, let's jump in this program. She thought, oh, Dwayne about to do another program. Because I used to do, like, you know, bodybuilder, beach, you know, all yeah, that yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. And then she's like, oh, you about to. Then she saw her her uh, uh, classmate from Clemson. Mm. She was like, oh, that's what Sudi did to lose all that weight. Wow. Once she saw her, she was all was on. on board. It was yeah. on. It took seeing somebody go through it. And that and that's why we don't spend ad dollars. We don't do ads. Right. We do word of mouth because your brother, your mother, your cousin, seeing their results, mm -hmm. it's going to bring you every time. Absolutely. They be like what it be like, like you already know what it is. It's your boy Calvin Light My Way, and this is Cut the Noise, Growing Through Conversation. Today I got a very special guest. This brother has been a mentor from afar and near, and he I hold him dear in my heart. He's high up on my list of brothers, you know what I mean? None other than Dwayne Axon. What's going on, man? What's up, brother? Super excited to be here. <laughs> man, it is such a pleasure <laughs> to have you here, bro. Yes, sir. Um, but can you give the people a little bit about yourself? Sure, sure. So my name is Dwayne Atkinson, uh, born and raised in a big city called Turkey, North Carolina. Um, yeah, that big city there. Uh, I'm the father of four beautiful children, husband of one. Um, I'm, I'm a believer uh, as well as a uh, person that enjoys fitness. Um, and I started a little podcast about six years ago. Just a little. Uh, yeah. Just a little podcast. <laughs> And I'm also the uh, the founder and CEO of a podcast network, also small. But, uh, man, I appreciate you for taking out the time to come and fellowship. Yes, sir. Um, but, man, there's just one word that comes to mind when I think of you, uh, all that you've been doing the last few years. And, you know, since, since you stepped into the realm of ministry, mm -hmm. and that word is transformation. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, can you tell us a little bit about your spiritual transformation? Sure, sure. So, I mean, if you think about it, a salvation is a transformation thing. Um, you know, Paul says we, you know, we're going to put on a new creature, a new creation. Um, and so whenever I walk the aisles in six runs, you right. know, fifth grade. Right, right. You know, uh, at uh, Youth Revival, <laughs> you know, that was the beginning of my journey. Uh, a lot of people don't know, but that's when. Uh, God actually saved me mm. uh, in fifth grade, but I wish I could say that that was like you know everything was you know roses and and, and peach blossoms, right, but right. that wasn't the case, man. <laughs> I wanted to be cool, I wanted to fit in, and so I I try to tuck my my salvation, you know, I try to tuck away that I was a Christian, mm -hmm. and so I went through life, you know, high school and the college. Um, trying to impersonate an unbeliever mm. uh, for years. I mean, doing everything I can to, to fit in. And and so the first transformation came when God used, um, I call it when he used my pride because, right. you know, I, I, I call myself a player. I call myself, you know, in the game and I could talk to multiple women. And uh, he used my pride to humble me, man. And what he did is uh, back in the day when he had a three-way call. Yeah. Had two ladies call me at the same time, <laughs> you know, and I'm sweet talking one and then the other one, oh, you so and so. So that was the beginning of the transformation, man, because that night I realized that I was making a mess of my life, man. Mm. And so I fell on my knees and um, and I pretty much was like, you know, God, uh, I need you back. Right. You know, I, I can't do this without you. And so that began um, my transformation where I actually started to, you know, live it. I confessed it with my mouth. Right. But it was it was when I started living it when things changed, man. And so um, even with that, uh, after that incident, um, I, you know, began to grow in the word um, and begin to uh, just grow spiritually when it comes to, you know, understand, understanding things of the Bible. Um, but I will say, and I want to warn your listeners, just because somebody says they're Christian or something is Christian per right, se, right, right. don't mean that it's biblical. Don't there mean it is of God. Right. Um, because there's a lot of false teachers. There's a lot of false prophets. There's a lot of people that are saying things. And I got caught up in a lot of that, too. So going into transformation again, man, um, you know, I went through a phase where 
Um, and no shade, anybody that like televangelists, no right. shade. <laughs> but a lot of those guys are on TV because they can afford to be on TV. Mm. And so, you know, not about spiritual gifts, not about, you know, whatever. Right. And so I understood that. And as I understood that, man, I started to develop and transform in my my spiritual walk when it comes to more biblically sound, you know, more, you know, uh, theologically sound teaching, man. And so I went into the, I guess you could say kind of the realm or the camp of reformed theology where right. I talk about, you know, predestination and, and all that stuff. So, so to some people, it's a turn off, but, you know, it, it's part of my transformation yeah. and it's part of my journey, uh, just finding uh, solid biblical resources and teachers and, and actually, you know, doing the same thing, reciprocating that to my family. So that they won't go through the things I went through. Right, right. Um, man, one one thing I remember is whenever I ain't gonna say when you were started in this on this path, on that path, but it was around that time I started seeing like the be not deceived. Yeah, man. The uh That's part of the journey. The the the, the uh what was it, the Facebook group, yeah, the YouTube yeah, video. Yeah. Man, and it was very eye opening. Yeah. Because me too, I I have, I'm, I'm going to say this, caveat. I had this belief that throughout life, it's almost as if we have multiple lives in one. Mm. Um, you know, break that, quick breakdown. Whenever you, from one to five, right, that's a certain certain level of knowledge that you have. Mm -hmm. From one to five mm -hmm. years old, then you go to school, now it's a whole, it's a whole new world. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then from about five to ten, you got, I, I figured it out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then you hit 13, and oh, it's a new world. <laughs> <laughs> and, that's true, that's you true. Know, and, and throughout time, looking back, relatively speaking, it's like, I've been with several different people. Mm -hmm. I've seen life from different perspectives and understood things thought some things would be true and yep. they come to find out yep. you know they weren't that's life man. um and when it comes to that spiritual journey going back mm -hmm. whenever you find out that you've been quote unquote deceived mm -hmm. it does something to you it does uh and many times i know a lot of brothers and sisters they they feel uh scarred and they walk away completely mm, so true uh but whenever you dig in Mm -hmm. And you seek mm -hmm. him, yep, his truth. You come to a revelation or understanding that what I'm seeing or what I'm angry or what hurt me wasn't him. It wasn't. It, it was wasn't. people. Exactly. Exactly. No, that's that's so good, man. Because and speaking of being not deceived, you know, um, that had to mature. Mm -hmm. You know, um, it was it was something that I I had a. It's something that I had a burden for, but then I was also pushing that burden on other people. Right. That wasn't right. necessarily necessarily biblical. Right. You know, because you know we we attacked the the, the uh, secular music and things like that, man. And then the, the the what happened was we weren't balanced. We were attacking secular music, but then we'll turn around and watch Transformers, where they cuss just <laughs> as much. You right, know what I mean? Right. 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 So so I had it, it took me. Seeing that and seeing that unbalance, like you know what, I can't. This it's not laid out in scripture that this is a bad thing. Mm. This within itself can be considered entertainment, can be considered you know whatever. I can't point out and name and and call out demons for everything. That's not my job. True. You know True. what I mean. And so it took that growth, man. It right. took seeing that and developing that. And then, like you said, there were so many people uh, that get that that got hurt from that. Mm -hmm. You know that. And like you said, they turn away from the faith, man. Right. And and I could have, like, when I found out about false teachers, I could have been like, oh, you know, the church. Yeah. But instead, like you said, I went back to the source and realized that they're doing something that's not that's not him. Yeah. You know. And and if you continue to dig, and, and it's, I have friends, man, that that walked away from the faith, and the very answers they were looking for, mm -hmm. I found later on, like, like, bro, like, here's the answer right, right here. They right. they just wasn't doing it right. Yeah. So I get that 100%, man. But, and, and one thing I say too, man, is it is truly a journey. It is. A lot of times with in life in general, I mean, business, marriage, so forth and so on, we get caught up on destination. Mm. Like, this is where I'm going. This mm -hmm. is this is it. Or oh, I've made it. Mm -hmm. And we don't realize that, no, this is just a stop. Yep. You know, this 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 was the comma and the yep. book, the story that is your life. This was just the comma. Right. But a lot of times we act like it's the end point. Mm -hmm. Say, so what was your guide in life? Mm -hmm. So I have what I call a non-negotiable. 
Okay. So I'll listen to any argument, any any pushback, anything when it comes to my spiritual growth, but I have one non-negotiable. As Jesus Christ is the Son of God that came to the earth, lived the perfect life, died on the cross, rose again, and seated next to the right hand of the Father. Right. That's my non-negotiable. Right. No matter where I go, no matter yeah. if we're talking about, you know, secular music, if we're talking about, you know, worship with, you know, lights and smoke and pyro, <laughs> yeah. if we're talking about hymns and, and organs, my non-negotiable is Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Right. No matter what. So that's that has always been my 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 steadfast rock. And because I have that and I hold on to that no matter what anybody say, mm -hmm. it, it gives me a little leeway. Okay, let yeah. me hear what you got to say. Right, right, Let me right. see what he got, you know. Uh, Hebrew Israelite brothers, you mm -hmm. know, that come at you hard. Right, like, right, that's right, my, right, That's my rock. We, we can talk about anything. Yeah. I don't care what color you think he is. Right. But his rock is going to stay right here. Right. Jesus Christ is the son of God, you know. So that was my guiding light, guiding force that I never wade from mm. I, w I listen to any argument i will we'll, we can talk about anything but that part is a non-negotiable mm. okay i love that um a lot of people when it comes to transformation they like to focus in on what they can see mm. <laughs> you know um the granted your weight loss transformation your growth over the last year what was it two years or yeah well, one year for the for the weight loss. Okay. Yeah. Has been amazing. <laughs> but before we get to that, mm -hmm. how do you believe you bridge that gap from the spiritual to the physical? Yeah. So, um, you know, I I just turned 40, well, about to turn 41 in January. Okay. Um, and so for me, when I turned 39, I knew 40 was coming. Right, right. And so I was like <laughs> I remember when my parents turned 40, mm -hmm. you know, I remember them having the over the hill party. I remember them bringing in like the, the, the wheelchair for my daddy, you mm -hmm. know, and you would have, and they were like, you turn 40, everything start falling apart. Right. So that's, that was in my mind, man. And so as my, you know, as the spiritual is continue to grow, cause I mean, it's not like I've made it or whatever. Right. I started to think about the physical aspect, you know, I think about, I think it's first Timothy four, eight, you know, he said physical, uh, your physical, uh, keeping up your physical is good, but you also want to take care of your spiritual body. Mm. So he didn't say it was bad to be physically right. fit. He just said that's good, but also do that. Right. And so I started thinking about the, the the physical side when, like I said, I was 20, 39 and I went to the doctor and he said, Hey, you're, you're leaning towards high blood pressure, mm. you know? And I was like, like what? Like, you know, cause I've always been like in my mind, even yeah. though I was, even though I was puffy, you know, mm -hmm. I still felt like I move on the court, right, right, do whatever right. I want to do. But for, to hear that for the first time, that's where it clicked in my mind. And also that same year, my dad uh, lost part of his foot because mm. of diabetes. You know, he, he went through this whole thing and lost part of his foot. And that's my Superman. Like, right. that's my, Absolutely. like, you know, man of steel can't, you know, that dude will do anything. Right. I believe he can stop a train. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So to see that. To, to, to hit 39, to hear from my doctor, and also remember when my parents turned 40, all of those things uh, were the things that said, okay, we got to do something different. Mm. And now is the time to do it. Um, and and there was no, you know, because I, I, I've done, like I've lost weight before. Right, right. I've gotten straight before. You know, I, I play ball, I lift some weights or whatever, and I'm back. Um, but this time it was different, man, because what changes is your why. Mm. Whenever your why is strong enough, it don't matter. Like, you know how people are like, oh, it's just fat. No, there's no fad when it comes to your why. Because your why is going to keep you, motivate you, continue to push you, man. So it starts in the mind. To answer right. your question long-windedly, because I'm a podcaster too, it starts in your mind. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, man, I, I love that because you made it real. Yeah. Uh, a lot of times we, we get it. and I was, I'm, I'm going to give you my little short version. Yeah, right? do it. Last month. Mm-hmm. My son, he's thirteen. Uh, he he's he's been self conscious about his weight over the you know for the last little while. So I got into biking, ride bikes. He don't like riding that much. Uh, <laughs> and encourage him to lift weight, do some push ups. And he's reached that point in age where he's starting to stretch now. Mm -hmm. You know, my brothers they real tall, mm -hmm. but both of them 
they had that chubby face. Yep, they that, did. I remember. And that's, that's where my son was. Now he's starting to stretch out now. Mm-hmm. So he feeling a little cocky, right? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> and he was talking with my wife, and he was saying, uh, yeah, dad be at the soccer game. He don't even suck his stomach in. <laughs> I was like, what are you talking about? You know? I'm always slim. I got that little yeah, guy, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, I uh, and I'm like, what? My wife was telling me. Uh-huh. Like, I was like, well, first of all, why am I suck it in? <laughs> why don't I do something about it? Yeah. You know yeah, what I mean? Like, sure. just, just <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Hold your breath. Yeah. And then somebody trying to talk to me and I'm out of breath. <laughs> that that ain't a good look. Sure. So so I'm sitting up there and I'm like, I'm listening to her and I'm just taking it in. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And she, you know, she tried to laugh it off a little bit. And I was like, nah, that's cool. And she thought I was going to, like, come back because, you know, your boy yep. got jokes. Oh, all, all, uh, <laughs> all day. So I fall back, and she was like, what's up? I was like, nah, I'm just going to do something about it. Mm. She like, what you mean? I said, well, it, it was it was probably like an hour or two. Mm-hmm. I, 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 I let it marinate. Mm-hmm. And I said, I'm going to use this as a teachable moment. Mm. I said, what I'm going to do. I'm going to shift. I eat a whole lot of bread. Look, brother loves sandwiches. Of course. I make a sandwich real quick. Uh, Bro, man, for the fifth floor. Yeah, yes, sir. Sandwiches. Yes, sir. Give me some sandwiches. <laughs> so I said, you know what? I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to chill on my bread. Mm-hmm. I'm going to wash my pot. I'm going to cut off the pasta and mm-hmm. the bread mm-hmm. and get off the soda. Mm-hmm. So I'm jumping on my water. I got this this canteen over here. Bro. Yeah, man. I fill it up every morning, and it's all day. It's going down. Nothing but water. Mm-hmm. I said, I'm going to do it 30 days. Tomorrow will be my... 30th day. Nice. Um, I, you know, I'm active relatively. You know, I, sure. do, I got the bikes and whatnot. Uh, and I lost 10 pounds, bro. Yeah. Like with no difference other than the nutritional yep. side. That's where it and, and through that, for me, was not only proving a point, but making it a habit. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Not just saying, you know, I'm going to do this. This is going to be my lifestyle change. I said, no. Nah, I'm going to do 30 days. Mm-hmm. I'm going to see results. And then from there, I'm going to make my decision on what my next steps are. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and it became real because, a lot, you know, everybody got this notion that dads, you get a dad bod. Right. You right. get a dad bod. Like, yeah. it's just normal. So, in, in our group, we, we say we turn dad bods into father figures. Ooh, <laughs> let's go. I love that. <laughs> so... I'm like, yo, I'm not going to accept the dad bar. Right. I'm going to do something about it. Right. And by doing something, I have progress. Yep. I have change. Yep. And a lot of times, man, people, speaking of transformation, people know what to do. Yes. Everybody knows what to Everybody do. Everybody knows what to Everybody. do. Everybody. It's just taking the initiative to actually do it. That's it, bro. That's it. And a lot of times it takes that outside catalyst. It may be a conversation. Yep. It may be yep. some words of, you know, yep. the stain that you didn't like yep. that, that hurt a little bit, yep. or it may be your doctor saying, bruh. Yeah. And yep. that reality check, it can either move you in the right direction or yep. you can just suffer in silence. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, it's good. You mentioned that because I mentioned, you know, losing weight before, um, I, the, the very first time I like, I guess, you know, after high school, right. I had my shirt off, and my dad saw me with my shirt off, and, and my back was turned to me. He's like, oh, boy, you got rose on your back. And that was the outside catalyst, and I turned it up. You know yep. what I mean? <laughs> yep, yep. <laughs> so I got in shape, and then I hurt my knee, so I, ah, I, I couldn't, couldn't right. play ball or whatever. And then um, I was working for the school system in South Carolina, and, like, I work at a special needs school, and so they had parties, like, every day. So I had, right. like, a plate with, like, donuts and cookies and <laughs> And the and the, the uh, janitor came by. I was like, "We well, keep on all them sweets. You gonna have diabetes." And I was like, mm. "Like I hate needles. I'm not gonna be, you know." So that was something from the outside again. Right, right. Got me motivated to, to to lose weight again. Um, and and each time those are good whys. Mm-hmm. Um, what's different this time right. for me is the why is even stronger. But then also the program I'm a part of. Right. It's kind of like what you just did. It's it's an eight week challenge. So it's mm. eight week cycles. Right. So every eight weeks, we, we go through the program. Mm. At the end of eight weeks, then we go through the program again. So it's not like a, okay, like you said, lifestyle, whatever, whatever. No, it's, each, it's a challenge every eight weeks. And you try to set new goals mm. and new things you want to accomplish within that eight weeks. Man, that's beautiful. Yeah, man. I like that because it's, it's like, I'm not selling the product. You know? <laughs> but 
if you interested, we'll have some links or whatever in the show notes. <laughs> but I like the concept because in life, man, like people say, man, I can't have no chocolate forever. Or uh, I got to stop this forever. Right. But with like the challenge or you setting goals, yeah. like you can see a finish line. Yeah. You know yep. what I mean? You, exactly. You, you, exactly. you can see like, okay, I'm, it's the journey, like yeah. I said before, but you see something that's visual. Yeah. You're like, yo, let me see what I can do. Yeah. yeah. In this time. And also to speak on that, um, the, you know, if he's not selling a product. I am. <laughs> <laughs> I work for them now, so I'm always selling. I know that's right. But, um, but no, so in the program we teach, uh, uh, moderation. You know, it's not like strict, strict, strict. No, 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 no. Right. It's be strict for six days. Mm. And then on one day for one meal, you can have anything you want. Right. You know, whether it's all the sandwiches piled right, up right, together, right, it's right. all the chocolate for one meal. Yeah. Eat anything you want. And I, your boy go hard. Yeah. I, I'm like Dwayne The Rock Johnson. Yeah, I yeah. got like pancakes. Like, and, his cheat days are legendary. Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> that and that's and and and. Cause and actually that actually helps you in the process because what you do is you stack your carbs and then when your body burns through those carbs and it's gonna be looking for more carbs and it's like where's the carbs and like oh there's only fat left then it's gonna start to burn mm. fat when you start back to your regular regimen on Monday Tuesday Wednesday right. Thursday Friday right. Saturday so okay so could you tell us a little bit about is it E T E two M yeah E two M eager to motivate um it's a Facebook based program. Um, it is a virtual personal training program, um, and the way it works is you become a member, uh, you join the private Facebook group, they have uh, live workouts, they have nightly motivational talks, my boss Jeff uh, Witherspoon is, I mean the dude is a walking motivational machine, like right. amazing, so he talks to you every night, they have chefs that you know show you how to cook the food. They have a mental health coach. Uh, mm -hmm. She does. She helps you with like eating disorder and mental health stuff. Um, they have you know yoga, uh, step, um, Zumba, um, abs, um, spin, um, and all the classes are either hit or um, circuit training. Mm -hmm. And um, it's a one-time payment of three twenty mm -hmm. or uh, forty dollars a week for eight weeks. Once you pay either three twenty or forty dollars a week for eight weeks, it's free for the rest of your life. Wow. I haven't paid a dime since last year, and I've benefited from this program. Lost over 65 pounds. My wife lo lost over 60 pounds. Um, yeah, it's an amazing program. Once you pay, it's free for life. You got access to everything that wow. I just mentioned. And he's always adding new stuff right. every round. Um, I'm one of the new ads. Uh, we're going to have a podcast coming out, a uh, YouTube channel. So, yeah, wow. eager to motivate E2M Fitness. Wow. I will put... All of that in the show. Yes, sir. <laughs> popping up on the screen everywhere. Oh, man. Uh, okay. So, when we, we talk transformation, we talk the spiritual, we talk the physical. But a lot of times what happens with men, you know, because we, we wear a lot of hats. Yep. We got a lot of responsibility. Yep. Uh, we protect and we provide and we guide and we teach them, right? Um, but it is that mental health side that gets, like, that, that gets missed. Could you speak on that, bro? Yeah, man. No, legit. I mean, we actually kind of talked about it before we hit record. Um, a lot of times in the black community, unfortunately, we downplay mental mm -hmm. health. Uh, and men, we downplay it even more. Yes, sir. Um, because we, we think that, you know, I mean, which we are. We are protectors. We and, and it doesn't make you soft if you, you know, seek out help when it comes right. to that. I mean, that's something I had to learn. I, I'm probably one of the most independent people ever. Like, I'm the last person to ask for help. Right. But... I understand the value of uh, talking out things because, you know, we it's funny. We actually did it unofficially in the barbershop, on the basketball court, you know, in the car riding. Yep. That's you consulting, you know, dealing with that mental health piece. Um, but the, the bad side is, you know, your partners, they didn't, they don't have the answers. Yeah. They're telling you all the wrong <laughs> stuff. So, you know, if you just take that conversation to a professional or to somebody that's trained, um, there's a lot of benefits to that. And I think, you know, just just seeing, you know, the world we're in today, how things happen so fast and how social media has a play on your your emotions and things like that. Um, we have to maintain that strength mentally. Like we have mm -hmm. to be able to, you know, to think clearly, to think precisely um, because things happen so fast. So uh, we, 
I mean, we have to be the first one to say, I don't, I can't figure all this out by myself. Right. You know, I, I need to either bounce this off of somebody or I need to talk with somebody. Um, so it, it's super important, man, um, that we don't neglect that. Um, not just, not just on the, you know, uh, you know, something like way out, whatever, when it comes to, you know, like you're trying to solve a major problem, right. but even on a day to day, you know, dealing with your family, dealing with your wife and your kids, uh, sometimes, you know, cause, cause we're men, we suffer in silence more yeah. than anybody else, man. So I, I encourage anybody, uh, to reach out, get some help. Um, if you need it, you know, I, I mean, I, I've consulted counseling before, um, it's not, you know, like what you see on TV nah. where you lay on the couch and, <laughs> nah, it's and, not. and tell your business. You know, it's not that, man. Um, but you also have to be genuine. I have to say that as well. Uh, you want to be genuine. You want to be honest. Um, because a lot of times we want to be guarded. We don't want to let people into our closet. Right. And that's something we also learn, you know. Mm-hmm. Could I, could that's how you explain the cousins that you never knew about. Right. Like, right. Like, where do the cousins come from? Right. Because right? grandma and great grandma, nobody wanted to talk about it. So. Um, we, we have to we have to dispel that mindset and and that's the and that's going back to transformation you can't grow unless you start in the in, in the mind man mm-hmm. everything starts in the mind you can't grow you can't progress you can't get better unless you uh, establish things in the mind get get your mind in a clear healthy space in order to to grow and progress uh, absolutely okay so when it comes to let me say we'll speak on family for a second uh, family issues and things of uh, different dynamics, mm-hmm. right? It's so important to actually have uncomfortable conversations. Mm. Uh, many times in my life, I, I, I'm going to speak of me. I don't know nobody else. <laughs> uh, I remember when I was in 12th grade, getting ready to graduate. Uh, my mom and my dad, they took the time. I, was, I got a large family. But I had three brothers, well, two brothers that lived in the house with me. Yeah. Nine siblings and all mm-hmm. that. Uh, <laughs> but my mom and dad, they took me out on this dinner. And on this dinner, one of the caveats was we were going to ride together. They were going to drive. And we went to Fayetteville, I believe it was. And we had conversation. Mm. Uh, talking about family traumas. Mm-hmm. We talked about issues that I had no idea that existed Mm -hmm. Uh, different dynamics when my mom was growing up when my dad was growing up and it revealed to me that everything ain't always perfect Mm. Um, but we don't have to suffer in silence Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and it also instills something in me that that's this one conversation right um, that I want to have those conversations with my kids yeah Mm-hmm. At proper time, mm-hmm. um, because one thing in the black community that's very prominent is this one saying: "What happens in this house mm-hmm. stays mm-hmm. in this house." Yeah, and I feel that is one of the most tragic and devastating ideologies to create in a household. Because what if you are getting hurt in this house? Exactly, and act, and actually, that's where it comes from. Yeah, that's where it comes from. Trying to protect, you know, uncle or granddad that. That may be doing something abusive, um, and so that, that's unfortunate. Um, I, I agree, man. Um, those conversations are necessary. Um, you know that that again, something that I I didn't get that conversation. Right. Like I'm jealous right now that right. you had that conversation with your parents because um, in my mind, for years, mm-hmm. you know, I thought I gr- I grew up in the Huxtable. Right, household. right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I I counted it a blessing that I had both parents, you know, right. a lot of my friends did not. Um, and so, uh, because those conversations didn't happen, that's actually how I found out I had an older brother. Right. When I, when I was 30. Wow. Yeah, I was 30 years old. I found out I had an older brother. Uh, my dad had before he met my mom. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, uh, you know, the, the picture painted was different, right. you know, and uh, that conversation didn't happen. Uh, and so, I... I want to make sure that I I'm transparent with my kids. I want to make sure that I have those tough conversations. Me and my son, uh, my son is before my marriage. Mm-hmm. Um, we we've had a, a tough conversation or two, uh, and and I think even though they're tough, even though they're um, you know they're uncomfortable, they're so necessary 
And then also, man, they like they're they're so liberating. Mm. Once the conversation is over, you know, once you get past it, the the air is is cleaner. You yeah. know, that the, there's not you're not holding something back. There's not something like just fogging. You know, your 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 thought. Um, so it's super necessary. Uh, like I said, unfortunately, I I I didn't have that with my parents. Um, and you know. And even now, I still think they, you know, because it's, it's just what they know. They right. don't know to be right. transparent. They right. don't know to let you in. I, I mean, even now, I think they still kind of hold things back, man. But um, all we can do is with our kids and, and, like you said, you know, having that conversation with your son um, is, is, is do better on that front to let them know right. for their kids, mm -hmm. you know, to have those conversations to, uh, you know, to speak out, you know, uh, if there's abuse, you know, or whatever. Uh, they have to speak out, man, right. and we have to teach our kids that, and and we have to change that. There's mm -hmm. nothing we can do about the past, exactly, exactly. But we have to change that, exactly. Um, also, man, it's like I, I'm, I'm gonna say this because generation before, well, I'm gonna say our generation a lot of times blame the one before them, and the one before they blame the ones before <laughs> them, and it's it's a cycle. It is that. You can't do nothing about if that's the direction that you're looking. Yeah. If you're looking back, always the point of finger, ain't nothing going to change. That's real. But to look forward, you can take power. You can take your control back. Because, see, one thing I, I, I personally believe is that when you take personal responsibility for a thing, now it changes. Yeah. Now you can move. Now, now you take the power in the situation. Right. Because, let's say, you just use us for example since we're in the room, right? Mm-hmm. If I say it's your fault that I'm in this situation, I can't do nothing about the situation. No. Nope. Nope. Because you put me here. Yep. According to me, in yep. my mind, it's all on you. You gave me the power. You have all the power. Yep. So I'm stuck. But once I say, you know what? It's me. I'm the reason. I take responsibility for whatever happened, happened. But I can control this. Mm -hmm. I can move forward. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that is it's almost a missing link mm -hmm. in every transformation. Because a lot of times people get stuck mm. after a week, after uh, the first month, or you hitting that first obstacle, you get stuck, and now it's it's got to be this, yep. or it's got to be that, yep. instead of looking in the mirror. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have to you have to take ownership. Right. You have to take ownership. Um, you know, in your journey, uh, especially you know, even in fitness. You know, you can't blame it on, oh, the kids got soccer. I can't work out. Oh, the kids got this. You can't blame your kids. Right. You, you make it, you know, you, you adapt. You know, Coach actually talked about that last night. You know, you're at soccer practice. Take your weights with you. You hey. know, pop them out the trunk and, and get it in, you know, or walk the track or whatever. Um, so it's, it's super important that, that you take ownership, you know, uh, of your transformation. Uh, you take ownership of your faults, you right. know, when, when, you, when you stumble, you know, because, you know, I'm not perfect. You know, it, I still, I still side out that Reese's, you know what I mean? <laughs> at that <laughs> register, so I'd, be, I'd be like, Ooh, and sometimes I get it, right, you know, right, right. just to be real, you yeah. know, it's just, it's just part of the journey, man. And so, uh, and, and when I get it, I was like, okay, D, you know, you know better, you it's know, like you got to do some work for yeah, this one. Yeah. We, yeah, we got, we got to work it off, you know, but, but taking that, that personal responsibility, it puts you in control. It gives you the 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 steering wheel and um and and what it does it also it puts you in a place where not only can you you know see your fault but man when you move forward mm -hmm. you, it's so much so much power there man because you're like okay i can't i overcame this right and then i kept going man so right. that, that's a big part of it okay so outside of the mental uh the self a lot of times people need that extra help Yes. They, they need uh, accountability. Oh, they man, need yeah. coaches. They need, you know, teachers. Uh, oh, this is even past, you know, we're talking passions and dreams. You need extra resources or people that know or have the information that you want. What advice would you give a person that's looking to transform when it comes to mentorship? Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, first place I, I always tell people is find somebody doing something you want to do. Mm -hmm. You know, find somebody – you know, either, you know, uh, whether it's, you know, physical or even on the spiritual side, who, some find somebody that you can kind of 
glean from because a lot of people we, we we're not gonna they're not gonna be in the grocery store you right, know it right. may be online right you know find somebody you can glean from and then um you know if you can establish a relationship that's good and then also maybe look for someone local that you mm-hmm. can connect with um accountability coaching and counseling are three major aspects in the journey man um going back to the program of course um that's probably the the, the best part of the program is the community because everybody is in one place with the same goal, you know, trying to get healthy. And so that you, you find people in your area or you find people with like, you know, like, like there's like doctors in there and they got their own little doctor group yeah. and they all hold each other accountable. There's wow. dentists, you know, just different people that connect, you know, a lot of people that I brought in from, you know, our hometown or wherever, you know, they just kind of connect and hold people accountable. Accountability is like super, super important. And then, you know, getting into the, the mentor state where you can find somebody that that, uh, you know, like for for in the program, mm-hmm. you know, a lot of people reach out to me because they have seen the transformation. And so, you know, I, I'm there to this, you know, hey, you should try this. You should right. do this. You should try that, you know, just kind of give a little guidance, man. And uh, it's really important that you seek those things out. A lot of times people they don't find because they're not looking, mm-hmm. you know, or they don't even they're not even thinking about it but a lot right. of times we you just have to take time to to look for those people look for that group look for your tribe man because right, right. they're out there i mean there's no reason you can't find somebody to at least glean from with the internet like yeah. legit so uh, there's no excuse for that man so i think for anybody uh you should be able to find either a, a tribe a mentor or uh somebody that can help you in that journey but no man i i really appreciate this man because at times, people, I'm going to say this, everybody feels stuck mm-hmm. at some point. Yep, for sure. Everybody feels stuck. And a lot of times, people won't see the transformation. Mm-hmm. Those that don't know you, they, they didn't see, you know, you plus 60 pounds. Yep. You know, but when they hear or they see someone they know that's close, that they have a relationship with, mm-hmm. That's when people come running. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like people come running whenever yeah. they 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 see results. You know yep. how how um, you know, a few years ago, and it seemed like it's, it happens in cycles. There's a big network marketing company or some kind of you know scam or scheme. How yep. people say, uh, "Hey, you send me this, and I'm gonna flip it and turn it to this." Mm-hmm. And people, so did you make the money? You did? Did you make the money? Nah, <laughs> bro. I'm working on trying to get my people. Bro, listen. <laughs> you talking about them flowers and stuff, bro? I told him, man. Listen, the dude came to me with that flower. I was like, okay, what happened to the dude on the bottom, though? He's right. Like, there ain't no dude on the bottom. We're just gonna keep going. Just keep going. Nah, Don't son. Somebody going. gonna be on the bottom, bro. <laughs> that that is not how this works. Well, fast forward. I actually talked to him last week. Yeah, bro. We I'm out about two k. <laughs> Told you somebody's at the bottom, bro. Yeah, but no, that's so real, man, and <laughs> it's it's unfortunate. Yeah, but it's real, man. Um, so that that's actually the piece, uh, that that was the I guess the thing for my wife. So mm. I saw my barber. My barber did the transformation, right. and I was like, I know this guy. It's my barber. He did the transformation. I said, Hey, babe, let's jump in this program. She thought, Oh, Dwayne, about to do another program because I used to do like you know bodybuilder beach you know all yeah, that yeah, stuff yeah, yeah and then she's like oh you buy then she saw her her uh, uh classmate from clemson mm. she's like oh that's what Sudi did to lose all that weight wow once she saw her she was all was on, on board it was yeah. on it took seeing somebody go through it and that and that's why we don't spend ad dollars at e2m we don't do ads right we do word of mouth because your brother your mother your cousin seeing their results mm-hmm. it's gonna bring you every time absolutely Yes, sir. And I feel like that is the perfect model of marketing yeah. when it even comes to the spiritual side. For sure. Because, Spreading the gospel. Because a lot of times, man, people say, you know, I'm going to say this, a preconceived notion. Mm-hmm. Everybody in church broke. <laughs> you know what I mean? People, they just want your money. The pastor wants your money. Or this mm-hmm. person wants your money. Uh, or all the people in the pews, they broke. Or why everybody trying to get, they just trying to get to heaven to get their glory, but they ain't learning nothing or get nothing in the house. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like that's the notion yeah. for people on the outside looking in. Mm-hmm. But when you see a brother 
You see somebody that you know. You see where they were. Yep. And God transformed them. Yep. Like there's nothing, nothing the, they could have done to do it by there's themselves. There's no way. <laughs> there's no way that somebody can tell you that God ain't real after you seen him move. Yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, no, legit. Legit. Like, you know, and that that's the beauty of salvation. That's that's how we know it's, it has nothing to do with us. Because mm. Without the unction of the Holy Spirit, we will not desire God. Right. When we were in our flesh and sin, we did not want anything. I mean, we put on a persona. Yeah. I was good at it. Yeah. I get on them drums and play up something, have <laughs> drunk and high. Play up something for the for the church. Right. But I didn't want the things of God until there was a transformation of the heart, man. That's mm -hmm. when and that and that's how you know it's it's something that God does. It's nothing that we do. Right. But it's something that he does and then you become a new creation, a brand new creature. You don't the old things have passed away. Everything become new. You don't you don't desire the things you used to do. You don't even I mean, you know, you don't even want those things, man. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and it's because you've been transformed, man. So definitely the case when it comes to your spiritual side. Yeah. And I say this too, and I'm a, I'm gonna bring us close to the end, right? Okay. Now. Um but that's the power of testimony. Be it and E2M, e be it in the scriptures, be it the body of Christ, be it in business, a testimonial from a person to actually experience a thing, be transformed, seek change, mm -hmm. it changes everything. It man. does. It does. Be because it's a, a story that you know. It's a living testimony. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And that living testimony, I... I I, I did a podcast uh, a few, I want to say two months ago, with uh, a brother of mine, Nathaniel O'Brien, right? Nathaniel Dwayne, my fault. I know him as Nate. <laughs> <laughs> but um, this brother, we, we met through dance, right? Mm -hmm. And throughout this time, your boy was out there, you know, crumping yep, it up, it you know, and uh, having a great time. When I met him, I was in the world. Mm -hmm. He was in the world. And this brother didn't have a high school diploma. I, I think he had dropped out or got kicked out mm -hmm. in like 10th grade. Uh, and he got into like internet marketing and we were both all over the place with MLMs and stuff. And uh, this brother now is a mogul. Mm. Um, he never finished high school. Mm -hmm. He's a multimillionaire. He's in real estate and everything else. Uh, business on top of business. Mm -hmm. But you know how people used to show this stuff and they're like, oh, yeah, this guy's a millionaire. I don't know him. Right, right. I don't know that cat. It's a difference, yeah. But to I know this cat. Mm -hmm. Like, that's a testimony. Mm -hmm. When I look over here and I see you, brother, and see your transformation, I know you. Mm -hmm. I see the transformation. Yep. And it's powerful to get these stories, to have podcasts, to, yep. to put it out because, and, I, and I'm going to get some pictures off your, off your Instagram. Course, I'm just going to be all over it. Too. <laughs> but, um, but to see a change, man, yeah, that's where power lies. Because yeah, I feel like that's the one of those outside catalysts like mm -hmm. we spoke of earlier mm -hmm. that someone can see and see that it's possible. Mm -hmm. You know, when you see that something's possible and you have an unction or a need or, or you feel a move on the inside, now you can see direction and you can find that mentor, that yep. program or that yep. coach yep. Or, or that brother that can just, that's accessible mm -hmm. so that you can get on the phone and say, hey man, what's that you working on? Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. But testimonials, man, I, I just, I love them, man. Yeah. I love them. For sure. Yeah, no, they're, they're definitely a trademark to any business, like you mentioned, anything, uh, that word of mouth, you know, and that's the reason why Jesus said, Go forth and make disciples preaching the gospel throughout the nation. That's why he said it, because hearing your story, telling people your story, but not just your story, but his story. Right. Is what uh, makes the difference. Right. So before we go, man, do you have any uh, advice or even if God puts something on your heart to share uh, about these people, about transformations, man? Man. So first, brother. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Um, this is awesome. I'm glad to be here. Super proud of you as well. Thanks, man. Watched you come up, man, and uh, and, and, and definitely glad for the invite, man. So for the people, man, uh, when it comes to transformation, uh, my first thing is I always tell people is what is your why? 
why do you want that transformation? Um, once you figure out what your why is, then uh, make this you know make the steps to make that happen. Whether it's you know like we talked about counseling or community or just finding somebody. Um, and then when it comes to your spiritual transformation, that's different. There's not much you have to do on your end except, you know, uh, follow Christ and, and let him be your guide and light. And, you know, you can even use my non-negotiable Jesus Christ, the son of God that came to this earth, hmm. lived the perfect life, died on the cross, rose again, and now seated at the right hand of the father. Make that your non-negotiable. And I can guarantee you to never steer you in the wrong direction. Man, I appreciate you, brother. Yes, sir. So till next time, stay encouraged, stay positive, stay productive. Till next time. Lights out. Chill.